Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable to you this day, O God, our rock and our redeemer. We have a family wedding coming up this weekend, and so my sister and brother-in-law are coming to town. And I'm looking forward to spending time with them, catching up and playing our family's traditional card game. I love spending time with my sister. We're 14 months apart, and I can count on her to be honest with me about everything, sometimes even a bit more honest than I might really like. I'm guessing I'm not unique here when I say that my sister is one of the few people that I can count on to call me out on all my stuff, to be completely honest with me in every moment, which is a good thing most of the time and a real pain at others. She is both my biggest cheerleader and my sharpest critic. And we all need someone like that in our lives, don't we? Someone who can always be candid with us. It's exactly this kind of relationship that enables the humility to which Jesus refers in today's scripture. In the chapters leading up to our gospel reading this morning, Jesus has been sparring with the Pharisees, skewering them with his clever parables. But now, just days before his crucifixion, he offers a parting shot at the Jerusalem leadership, telling the crowd to do what they teach, but not to do what they do because they don't practice what they preach. They don't walk the talk. Whoa. Whoa, that is a jab that really gets our attention, doesn't it? If you can't walk the talk, you lose all credibility. And yet, a part of us gets just a little excited hearing it, doesn't it? It's kind of like watching Stephen Colbert unmask and lampoon someone for being a hypocrite. There's a reason that Colbert is so popular. But then Jesus delivers a blow. He says, all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Suddenly, things just got really personal. Because we all have trouble walking the talk, don't we? Our imaginations often outstrip our abilities because it takes more courage and effort than we can sometimes summon to live out the things that we believe in. And, as research has shown, we often overestimate our own abilities. Most people think they're in the top 10% of their profession. About 80% of us think that. That math just doesn't work, does it? Our egos get in the way. I think this is why Jesus gave many of us sisters who call us out and get us to really listen and ask the questions of ourselves. And if we're still struggling with our egos, Jesus tells us to help someone else. Because when we're serving others, we tend to forget about ourselves. As we exalt others and lift them up, lift up the most humble of servants, we can't help but walk the talk. You know, one of the big reasons that I love Pope Francis is that he offers such an authentic example of exactly what Jesus is talking about. He refers to himself not as the Pope, but rather as the Bishop of Rome. He chooses ordinary comfy shoes over the fancy red papal ones, and he lives amongst the priests in the Vatican rather than in the papal apartment so that he can be in community with others. If one of us were to write to Pope Francis, papal etiquette suggests that a letter must end with these words. Prostrate at the feet of your holiness and imploring the favor of your apostolic benediction, I have the honor to be, very holy father, with the deepest veneration of your holiness, the most humble and most obedient servant. When a commentator noted that this is likely why the Pope gets so few postcards, I laughed right out loud. <laughs> However, something tells me that Pope Francis would rather have the postcards and skip that venerated closing. At a recent 
professional development workshop offered by the Living Water Association, I was privileged along with a large group of other pastors to hear Dr. James Knight talk about humility and in particular about cultural humility. Noting that we too often want to be right than to be understood by one another, Knight says that we need to let go of our ignorance, or excuse me, our arrogance and our pridefulness and instead adopt a heart of humility in order to move the world forward. He points out that we can disagree with one another but still walk together in love. Knight suggests that at the center of living in humility is the ability to put, ourself, put others over self and to work together as collaborative partners, constantly learning the needs of others before offering help. Humble living also means addressing power imbalances and committing to a life of continual learning and self-critique. Knight offered a powerful example to distinguish between equality and equity. This is different than the example he offered, but I found this and I thought it really brings home that point. So I offer the image to make the point that being humble and serving others takes more than just equality, a standard to which we are often ready to use as our end game. It's only when we achieve equity that we allow everyone to fully participate. And when we reach liberation, all can do so without impediment, as you can clearly see on the slide to the far right. We all know the golden rule, but Dr. Knight takes things to another level, offering the platinum rule that calls us to do unto others as they want done unto them. Do unto others as they want done unto them. This means that we have to love others from a lens other than our own, which is a challenging but important way to view those around us. Humbling ourselves by letting go of our egos and choosing instead to exalt others by serving them is a challenge. It, makes, it means making changes in how we view the world, in meeting people where they are, rather than, rather than expecting them to conform to our view of the world. But when we answer the call to lift the burdens of others and serve them, we find freedom and fulfillment. We truly walk the talk. As St. Francis of Assisi said, Preach the gospel always. If you have to, use words. As my sister and I were making our plans for their visit this weekend, we talked about them staying for Thanksgiving since neither of us will be with our children for the holiday this year. But then we gave it another thought and we realized that it would mean that we would be together for more than a week. And that's often a recipe for disaster, and I'm guessing by your chuckles you understand that. Siblings are great, aren't they? But there's a limit to how much truth-telling and humility one person can take in a short amount of time, at least from our family members. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't follow what Jesus demands. We will exalt others by serving them, not just, just not together. So my prayer for each of us is that our thanksgivings and all of our days be filled with humbling ourselves to lift others up in service. May it be so. Amen.